What's up YouTube, Mr. LimeSC here, and today we're going to be talking through the Diablo 2 Resurrected Amazon. This is going to be how to build the Amazon, mercenary, all the gear, the skills, the stats, the leveling, everything. And uh, hopefully by the end of it you feel very confident playing through the Amazon, and this is going to be the Javazon specifically. So we'll focus on that, and then we'll do the other builds, of course, in the future. So, starting out, this right here is how the Amazon herself is built with all of her starting stats, her life gain per vitality, her mana gain per energy, all her life and everything gained there. And then you can see all of the breakpoints listed over on the side right there. Um, and we'll talk a little bit about how the breakpoints work, but those are going to be the breakpoints specifically right there. So, very quickly, let's start out and just go through the final skills for the character. This is going to be the tree that I would build for her. This would be assuming level 99 with all of the quests completed, so you have 110 skill points to use. Um, I like to get ultimately eventually like one point into valkyrie it can just be really nice and very helpful one point over here in pierce as pierce is going to have um, a chance to boost it and then you're of course going to get all to boost your piercing and then you'll get this mixed with your razor tail you can get up close to 100 uh, percent and then all of your skills right here you'll be focusing on charge strike and on lightning fury for your damage and then the rest are just going to be synergies if you don't want to get a point in Valkyrie, you can just not get a point in Valkyrie. It's not really like a crazy important thing for this character. Um, but it just depends how tanky and, and everything that you want to be, right? So that is going to be the final skills, how I would build them right there. There's slight variations for all of this. Now, when you're leveling up, I can actually take you through kind of how I would level up, where I would respec everything along those lines. So obviously level one goes here. Level 2, 3, 4, 5, I'm saving, and the same with the Den of Evil. And then I'm going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 for those 5 points, and 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 4, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. From there, I'll probably just go 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, right? This is just going to be using Poison Jab as my main skill, and then eventually I'll get into Charge Strike, where 18, 19, 20... 21, 22, 23, I can just use this and just keep kind of boosting that charge strike. I will uh, then be respecking out of that because I, Poison Jab kind of falls off when you get to like Act 4 of Normal. I'll be respecking out and I'll just be putting the points into here. So those points that we had right there, we had the 5 and then we had like 13 there. I can just jam all of those over here. And just put them into Power Strike to give that synergy for Charge Strike. And then I can carry this character all the way through to like level 30. Right? Level 30, 31, 32, whatever it is. Where I can then respec once again um, out of that. Because I have my Nightmare respec. I can get a few points in Pierce. I like to get a few points early on. Get like three or four points right there. Because I don't have enough plus skills immediately. And then the rest of the points, I'll go here, and I'll go 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever it is. Let's say I'm level 34. Um, and then the rest that I can into Charge Strike. So let's say that that goes like there. And then whatever is kind of remaining, I'll put into Power Strike at that point. Um, and then from there, every single point's just going to go into Lightning Fury. I'll just spam up Lightning Fury all the way to 20. Then I'll spam up Charge Strike all the way to 20. Then I'll probably start putting points into Power Strike all the way to 20. And of course, along the way, if you would like, you can get a Decoy and you can get a Valkyrie if you would like that as well. Um, I think I actually did a hardcore speedrun or playthrough of the game uh, where I used a Valkyrie. And I ended up getting the Valkyrie up to like 17 points because at 17 points the Valkyrie gets very strong. So I got her to 17, she spawns with a really good weapon when you do that, uh, and she can pretty much solo the game. She's very, very, very tanky when you do that right there. And like I say, you're just going to be maxing out that Lightning Fury and that Charge Strike. So this is kind of my leveling path there. In terms of stats, I'm going to simply be going 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 uh, for, for the start right there, just to get up to enough to wear a normal belt because that'll have three sockets or 12 potions that I can hold. Um, and then everything else is going to go into Vitality. I'm not going to put anything else 
in dexterity or energy or anything like that. I'm just going to keep pumping up vitality. And I think it can go like this to put like 10 at a time. But whatever. You'll just keep pumping up um, your, uh, your vitality right there. And then when you respec, you'll go up a little bit more probably on your strength. Maybe like 34 if you want to wear an Ancient's Pledge and a large shield. Um, if you're doing Rhyme and a bone shield, then you'll not even need that much. Uh, but ultimately, I don't mind ending up, as I'm leveling, around like 45 strength. And the reason is because when you get to Nightmare, there's a lot of items that are actually decent that you can buy. Um, that are going to be, you know, like, that's not going to be a lot of strength. Uh, but there, there's a lot of like heavy belts and things that will actually not be terrible for you to use. And they're like 45 strength. A lot of boots, like you can see, this is 45 strength. Let's pretend this pretend this had like 80 life on it. This would be a great buy. I can wear that, right? I can wear a lot of the shields. Kite shield is 47 strength. So if I, you know, found some really good kite shield I wanted, I could go ahead and put two more points in for that. If I found some nice boots or whatever, there's just a lot of things that I don't mind having this. So when I'm around like level 30 to 40, I like to have about 45 strength, something around there. Anywhere up to like 60 is kind of the max that I'm going for at that time. Unless I find like Titans and whatever stuff and I'm starting to gear for that. Um, otherwise, once again, I'm still just pumping all my points into Vitality. And this character should really not need any energy whatsoever. Charge Strike does not rely on attack rating. This always hits. Okay, so you can actually see when I have the attack rating right there. If I change and put charge strike on right and you can see right here the attack rating goes away it always will hit and same with your lightning fury um that's lightning bolt let me get lightning fury same thing there's no attack rating for it it's always going to hit and because of this you don't need any attack rating you don't need to put those points into dexterity there you're just doing enough strength for gear enough dexterity for gear you could go max block on her. I don't really like it that much. Um, but you're just doing that and going forward. Speaking of max block and blocking and all that stuff, let's take a look real fast at some of the frames for this game. So if you look over here, you can see the Amazon. You can see she has a terrible starting cast. This is her cast base. This is her cast rate frames. This is her hit recovery frames. And then we have block frames down below. Um, but you can see that for like casting and hit recovery, she has terrible frames in this game. Absolutely horrible. So even if you've got like a hundred FCR, it's still like 12 frames, which is almost just what a sorceress has just as a, as a basic character. <laughs> I mean, just truly awful for the Amazon. She's going to have a very long animation. It's going to take a long time for her to cast uh, anything. So you do want to be careful if you're trying to teleport around with her, stuff like that. Her hit recovery is not great. There are worse uh, characters like the Druid here and the Necro, but it's still not amazing. Um, and one thing to note is teaching with frames or what breakpoints are exactly in this game. Every single point of FCR that you get isn't going to boost it. So, for instance, let's say I have 25 FCR. I Okay, so it takes 16 frames. Let's say I have 30 FCR. It still takes six, 16 frames. Let's say I have 35 FCR. Now it'll take 15 frames. Let's say I have 40 FCR. Still 15, 40, 46, still 15 frames, right? So every point that you get from in FCR or in FHR or whatever it is, isn't always going to make your character cast faster or recover faster. There's literally breakpoints that when they hit, then you get it. So for instance, right here, you can see that would be like 16 frames and then the red line would be a break point. And as soon as you get a certain percentage, it goes to 15 frames. As soon as you get a certain percentage, it goes to 14 frames. It's exactly like that. There's no curve on it whatsoever. So knowing these is always good. And like I said, there is the numbers right down there in the bottom corner and the frames that you're going to get for each of those. Uh, so anyways, that covers kind of the stats and breakpoints. Um, like I say, enough for gear and your strength, whatever that is, enough for gear and your dexterity, whatever that is, and all the rest 
are going to go into vitality for this character. Now let's talk about gear because this is going to be the really big important piece, right? So the main gear for this character is going to be uh, chain of honor right there for a weapon or for an armor. Titans is pretty much your standard ethereal titans or thunderstroke. Some people prefer to run that. Griffin's helm, high lord's ami. Some people prefer cat's eye, um, but high lord's is the standard. A Raven Frost Ring for Cannot Be Frozen, massively important. Uh, boots, I feel like, are really kind of a little bit open, but a lot of people like Water Walks on her. Just get the big life and dexterity boost, which can be nice for kind of your gear. Um, Razor Tail is pretty universally used. You use Thunder Gods if you're like bossing, but this adds 33% pierce, which when stacked with the points that you're putting over here, you're gonna have, you can see 33 plus 63, that's already 96%, and I don't even have all my plus to skills yet. So you get 100% pierce when you use Razor Tail, pretty much, with some basic gear, and that is amazing for this character, because then everything, all your Lightning Furies are gonna pierce through and hit other stuff. Um, I have some Blood Fist right here. They're not like always the ideal, so I'll actually put them away, and we'll put on some of these once we get a couple other things. We have a call to arms. You can see we're not quite at the strength that we need. So let's go ahead and probably have a lot of that we can get rid of. And this is why you always want to like calculate before you put everything on. You want to look at how much strength do I need for everything. And spirit shield often is going to be the item uh, that you need more for. So let's actually take out a little bit more here because we need it for our offhand. And let me put on another ring. And then some of these gloves. We'll put those on for now. So this right here would be a pretty good ultimate setup. And we can talk through it now. We've got some 320s. Just very solid. You could also use some sort of 220 with leech on it. With resistances. Just like really nice to have some gloves like that. Um, if you can't afford something like that, you could even use Blood Fist, get some basic life IAS hit recovery. Um, you can also use like Sanders gloves, whatever things. We'll talk through the budget stuff a little bit later. But this is kind of like best in slot sort of stuff. You're going to use Titans, F Titans if you can, Griffins, COH, Raven Frost, Razor Tail. I have a dual leech ring with, with uh, 11 all res right here, but you could also just say a BK ring. Either one of those, or an SOJ. Um, water walks or treks, or I mean, once again, you have options here. Spirit shield and high lords. This is pretty much your kind of standard setup with a CTA and a spirit on your offhand, and then your torch, your Annie, and if you can get um, nice charms like this, javelin charms with 45 lifers, 20 life, 17 manas. Uh, this is going to be kind of a pretty, like, GG setup for your character. The more of this you can get, the better. Now, there are some maybe stretch goals for this character. A Jeweler's Archon Plate of the Whale uh, with four light facets in it could be a really big, like, stretch piece. A J Mod, of course, with four light things in it. This helps with your block, so you can go for the block with this item. Maybe some, like, amazing boots, run, walk, hit recovery, 120 resistances, nine decks. I mean, you know, these are some, like, insane items, but this is kind of those, like, stretch goals for crazy characters like this. Um, that's very much on the stretch side, though. This is going to be way easier to get, and you'll still be very solid with this sort of stuff. Now, let's talk about uh, a couple other options, because this is kind of a damage build that we have right here. What if we want to go into a physical sustain build, right? Okay, well, maybe running something like um, a Phoenix Shield would be really nice, right? You get that redemption, which is going to help your character a lot. Additionally, having, uh, you know, maybe those gloves that I showed right there on top of this sort of ring. Now you've got Mana Steel, you've got Mana Steel right there, and then you could take these javelins and actually up them uh, using the crafting recipe to make them matriarchal javelins, so they do more physical damage, which means you get more mana steal and life steal, and this would always make it so you get a little bit more sustain, right? Makes it a little bit heavier of a, of a um, physical damage build, which is going to help you out a lot right there. 
Now, of course, all of this stuff is very, very good. What happens when I don't have all of these GG items, right? What happens when I don't have all that stuff? And this is where we dive into the simpler times and simpler things. So for a weapon, what's amazing about this character is pretty much any javelins are, are good. Just having javelins. You could literally clear the game with your starter level one, one gold javelins because her skills do so much damage. Of course, you'd like to boost them up a little bit. So what are some basic options there? Something like this. You can literally shop this. I shopped this from Anya in like 35 seconds or something. You can just go to Anya, go back and forth to the portal, go to Mala, whatever it is. And after you've, when you're like level 30, 40 around that time, you can literally just shop some javelins that just throw quickly. Because all we're trying to really do right here is make it so we can throw quickly. That's it, right? And yeah, you'll have to go back to town and repair, you know, and that'll cost whatever, you know, okay, 96 gold. It's like not expensive. It's just a little annoying. But you can even buy two or three of these and just keep them in your inventory and just cycle them around. Saves you some time. Then you can go back. So this is a very cheap, easy way to get some quick, quick, just like fast damage. Because once again, the damage comes from how many times you throw this, how many times you stab with this, not how much damage is on the weapon. In terms of armors, stealth is going to be your pretty much standard starting runeward. Um, something like a twitch throw would also be nice for this character, right? Just something very easy with a little bit of IES. Uh, you can work your way up into a piece, very cheap runeward. You get two to Amazon skills, and you get this chance to cast a, excuse me, a Valkyrie on striking, which is super helpful. Um, now you need to have one point in Valkyrie for that Valkyrie to stay alive, but. If you put one point in Valkyrie, then you get a level 15 Valkyrie with a 2% chance on striking. It actually ends up being pretty nice. But the 2 to Amazon skills is really good for it. You could also get like a smoke a little bit later. 50 to all resistances. That's pretty nice. And then of course something like a Durial Shell with Cannot Be Frozen. Or a Spirit Shroud with Cannot Be Frozen. You're getting the skills. You're getting the resistances. Those are those are very nice. A Viper Magi is not terrible. Res and, and uh, plus 1 skills. Q Hagen's gives you, uh, you know, plus one skills on it. Not quite as good, but decent. I mean, these are all like decent, cheap, easy armors. If you want to magic find a little bit, you can maybe get a Scolders and put it on. Also has the plus one skills. Um, pretty simple, right? So just kind of look for skills, res, um, and then this has some FRW, FHR, dexterity. It's very, very nice for level 17. Uh, continuing forward for belts. Something even like a Death's Guard I would use through the entirety of the game if I did not find another source of Cannot Be Frozen. S not the easiest thing to find. Very small, not great belt. It's literally just here for Cannot Be Frozen. But if you do happen to find Death's Hands, then you actually get a really nice set combination between the belt and the hands. But regardless, having the belt would be a nice simple one. Uh, something like Night Smoke for just all res. String of Ears is nice. Get some damage reduce on it. Gold Wrap is nice. You get a little bit of IAS, which can, which can be helpful. But remember what I said? Even the simplest thing of going to the vendor and buying a big life belt. This will take you five minutes to find from Charcy or, or, or any of the like belt vendors, right? You can just go back and forth, go back and forth, and get massive amounts of life just by wearing a big old belt. You could also maybe find a belt with some life and res and things that can be nice. Um, and then here's T Gods, which is also very good uh, if you can't have Razor Tail. Now, Razor Tail is pretty cheap, but this is just some like, if you don't get it, it could be nice. You know, Nosferatu's isn't terrible, all that stuff. In terms of rings and Amis, um, starting out, just getting anything with like resistance is really nice. Moving, you know, even this, 50% fire res. If I have nothing, this is like a great little amulet to start out with. Then I can move into Nightmare. Maybe I get like life and resistances that can be good. And then when I get to hell, I could get something like this, which this doesn't have any javelin skills on it or Amazon skills, but it's got strength, life, resistances. That's a decent little amulet to wear, right? And maybe even craft a little something and maybe you get something from it. Um, in terms of rings, you're really just going to be looking for anything with uh, some strength, some resistances, some dexterity, some, you know, just pretty much that sort of stuff. Some life, um, just kind of the basic stuff right here. 
So just kind of whatever you find with those things. And if you're looking for uniques, Nagels can help with MF. Dwarf Stars have 40 life on them. SOJBK have plus to skills and life or mana. Um, Wisp for some Sorb. Ravenfrost, like I say, is going to be a best in slot item because it has cannot be frozen and X and cold absorb and mana. Uh, it's just a very nice item right there. Serikin's Chance isn't bad. Res and Attributes, once again. Um, Seraph's Him is actually not a terrible amulet. I mean, I, I prefer Cat's Eye or um, High Lords, but this has two to all skills on it. That's not bad. I have Etlich's very low level and a nice plus one skills. Mahim Oak even, all res, all attributes. Really, I mean, there's a lot of basic things that we're just looking for with this sort of stuff that can be good. Moving into shields, this would be my recommended shield to you. You can get it from Nightmare and Dariel and this, or uh, Nightmare Countess. And this is because you can get the Shale Rune. You can get Cannot Be Frozen, and that is just going to make your life so much easier. If you're running around and you can be frozen, you're going to have to be so much better at positioning. It's going to be very difficult. This is very, very, very good. This is another super cheap option that you can get. Ancient's Pledge, I would recommend. Um, if you have Cannot Be Frozen, this is like a great early one for just big resistances that you can grab. Uh, and then, hey, maybe you find, like, a Moser's later. You can just put 2P Diamonds, get some nice res in it. Lidless would be probably not great for this character, whatever. Um, moving to Shields, or Helms. Two Tear Runes isn't terrible if you need some mana per kill. Nadir is helpful with Cloak of Shadows. Um, but, you know, if I'm really looking for just, like, res, jamming just some res runes into a 3 open socket or 2 open socket helmet is perfect. This is a 90 resistance helmet. This is so good. Uh, a lot of people kind of underestimate how much you can really just use this to get a 30 all res helm pretty much, and it's great. Um, lore, lore helm, once again, I love this. You get the plus to skills, you get energy, you get res, and you get mana per kill. Um, very good, and another Nightmare Countess item. Peasant Crown is very good. You get the faster run walk, you get the skills, Vita Energy. Tarn Helm, you get plus one to skills, some MF. Rock Stopper. Try res, damage reduce, vitality, hit recovery. There's really a lot of good items in this game. In this mid-tier, Irathas, this is the same sort of 90 res helm. So a lot of these very recommended as good helms in that in-between. For gloves, Blood Fist, IS hit recovery life. Sanders, IES life. Even just some random shopped IES gloves with some resistances. Once again, 5-10 minutes and you'll be able to find these. Uh, laying of hands are super nice. You get that fire res on them, which is good. So I'd recommend any of like these four sorts of things for your character if you can't get some like 320s or anything like that. In terms of boots, just some basic boots. Uh, some Hisaris boots are really nice for this character. If you can get up to Alders, you can get some really big fire res on them, which is super nice. Um, Natalia's boots, I absolutely love. 40 fast run walk with dual res. Those are super good. Even Inferno Striders wouldn't be terrible. Once again, just more fire res, faster run walk. Very simple things. And then we have the water walks, or you could have your treks or whatever it is. Um, but there's a lot of like decent options. And of course, worst case, maybe you find some boots like this. 20 fast run walk with dual res, some MF. Or you can shop 40 faster run walk boots with 39 light res or whatever. These are fantastic, and you can just literally go shop these when you get to, you know, Hell or Late Nightmare or whatever it is. Um, when you're, like, mid-40s, you can get these. So, a lot of really nice things just from that. So, that's kind of the gear and the options that I would go with for the gear and some of the budget stuff that you'll kind of be building with as you progress. Uh, Sanders boots are also great. Yep, you can also throw Sanders boots in there. I mean, there's a lot of really cheap, easy things. Um... That, that can just give you some res, some faster run walk, some strength decks, some resistance in life, all those sorts of things. Now, moving over to the mercenary. Your main weapon is going to be infinity for the mercenary. This is just because you do this lightning damage. So having an F infinity on your merce is going to just dominate. This is your best in slot by far. Other options could be something like an Obedience, okay? It's very high damage for the Mercenary himself. This is very cheap. Helco, Thol, Eth, Fal. Look at the damage on it. Huge. Also a chance for Enchant, which is massive. You could also put an Insight. This will help with any mana um, issues if you feel like you're going to have that. Reaper's Toll, Bone Hue, Tomb Reaver, right? 
but infinity is going to be your main primary thing in terms of armor eth fortitude is going to be what you what you want to build for the character um if you can't afford this treachery this is like the gg amazing simple armor it costs a lem rune shale full lem you get 45 45 is hit recovery cold reds but the chance for fade and venom are really really nice um and that's going to benefit your mercenary a lot so this is always my recommended and if you can't even get that lem maybe you find a shaft stop or something there's definitely a lot of like okay armors that you can get along the way that you can throw on the mercenary in terms of helmets Andy's helm is pretty much my like top tier obviously if it's ethereal it's better and putting a Rao rune in it to nullify the minus 30 fire res is often done so you socket it put a Rao rune and it's really nice uh crown of thieves is a nice cheap budget option tal Rosh's is a very cheap budget option you can find this literally anywhere pretty much massive lifesteal though and some res and life is super good so getting that lifesteal though is very important that's something you should notice 10% lifesteal, 12% lifesteal, 10% lifesteal, 8% lifesteal, right? All of these have in common is good lifesteal because you really want that for your mercenary. Um, so Gaze is another one, and you can get some damage reduced. And even maybe something like Akira's, just for massive resistances and cannot be frozen, that can help him out. Um, so that'll help out your mercenary. And the ideal mercenary for you is going to be Nightmare Act 2. And you'll probably want to get a defensive one or a um, offensive one, depending if you want Might Aura or if you want um, Holy Freeze Aura. So that's really kind of personal preference. I like to get the uh, Holy Freeze Aura. So, oh, I've got a random girl. Okay. I like to get the Holy Freeze Aura. It's just a lot nicer. You put this with Infinity, it makes it a little bit safer. We're not caring as much about the Might but it would boost his damage up and a little bit of our physical. So if I'm going for that physical sustain, that can be very nice. Um, but yeah, that pretty much kind of sums up all of those pieces for her. And then once you have all of this stuff, once you've got the GG items on your character or even just some basic things and your mercenaries feeling good and all that stuff, there's a few really good areas for you to farm. Uh, the first one I like is I do like running around the Worldstone Keep, especially if he has infinity. So let me actually like put infinity on him and put a fortitude and we'll put that. Oops. Perfect. So this is one of the areas that I really like farming. Uh, I guess I'm not specced out, but that's even okay. I don't even need like, look, look how little I've specced into this and we can still just murder everything, right? <laughs> like I literally have no points invested anywhere. I have 95 points still available. This is how strong this character is. I'm in Nightmare. Oh, that's a good point. But honestly, even in Hell, we would still probably be pretty strong. But sure, it's Nightmare, but I'm still... I have, like, no no point specced in Nightmare here. Like, e even in Nightmare, I, you should still think you would need more than a couple skills. But this is, this is how it is, right? So I love farming around in uh, Worldstone Keep. I love farming around in the Chaos Sanctuary. She's very good to farm. Um, honestly, you can farm so many areas there. She's very good in the pits. If you go back to the pit from the Black from the Outer Cloister in the Timo Highland, she's very solid right there. Um, so, and then Cow Level is a very popular place for her as well because you get giant clusters of cows and you murder them. So, the more places that you find with monsters, just in giant conglomerate i mean just jam together the more damage that she does um and even with some light immunes i mean obviously you're gonna break a lot of them but even some you're gonna have high physical damage when you go and so you can stab a lot of dudes to death that way uh so it's very 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 strong highly recommended um this is a super solid character i mean here we can we can take her a little bit to hell right here put a couple more points into some things Blah, blah, blah. And let's go to... Sure, we'll go back to the World Stone Keep and see how she does with still not a lot of points. So here you can see... I mean, look at this. 
This is ridiculous. These are lightning immune monsters. We break the immunities. And we still have 77 skill points remaining. Like, I wasn't kidding with you guys. It's, this is a very, very, very strong build. And then, like I say, right now for this character, we have uh, the Phoenix with Redemption. So it's very hard for us to even die. Our resistances are pretty good for the lightning monsters. But, like, this is just a very strong, good character. And Infinity definitely helps. Um, but, yeah. And like I say, the more you can group monsters up, the better that she's going to be. So that's really the main thing is... Focus on getting all of these monsters really grouped up here. And that'll help you a lot. Need that infinity. <laughs> a lot of, we, we spawned like every light immune monster down here. So this is a terrible spawn and we can still murder everything. But that's just a really good way to show like how strong this character is. How well she plays through. And really it's just, you know, go from there. Now before you get infinity, you can actually run a uh, lower resist one if you want. You can just buy one of those very easily. And I can actually go back really quickly and show you that. So if we go over here, you can literally get this and you could just put this off on your offhand or put it in your inventory or something. And it's just lower resist charges. You run up to a lightning immune or a boss or whatever. You lower resist it and it clears a lot of those out. And then you don't even need infinity. It's your own personal infinity. So that's a great option before you have CTA or whatever it is for your offhand. Go, cast it on them. You're good to go and move forward. And then additionally, you can also get a teleport staff to help you like teleport around some. But be careful. She is very uh, bad in her frames as we talked about before. So yeah, overall, like I say, the Javazon is a, an S tier starter build. And that's mostly because, like I say, you can just grab this pair of Javelins and murder everything. She's so good. She's so strong. She is going to be weak in her frames. So be careful there. Um, but you have a Valkyrie, which is very helpful if you want to get that. Uh, and then it doesn't even take a lot of skills, like I said, to really just get this character up to a murderous quick spree she is the fastest boss killer in the game um if i maxed out all my skills and went to bail we would just like boop, boop, and dale would just explode uh one two shots he'd be dead so she's very 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 um fast with all of that and very good in team play as well if you get a couple moms in front of her or, or like summons or other characters and she sits back she will just murder everything so with that being said, I hope that this was useful. If you have any questions, comments, feel free to post them below. But uh, yeah, thanks for watching, YouTube. Peace.